everybody. I'm Amy. I'm Paul. And welcome back to the Comics Hall. We've got a great show for you this week covering all of the newest releases from Wednesday, September 9th. All right. We've also got our moderator, Cassidy, here in the chat. Hey, say, say hi, Cassidy. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Um, as per usual, we are live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and the Let Your Geek Sideshow Facebook group. So if you want to say something, just hit me up in those chats. Any questions, comments, concerns, comic book related uh, anecdotes, that's where you can shout that out. And if you guys are listening to us on the podcast version, uh, thank you and and welcome to the, the we are recording from the past uh, to bring you all of the comic book present uh, for this week. So you can check us out live on Wednesdays or you can catch up on the podcast, which does launch on Thursdays of this week. So we had a little bit of a slow news week, didn't we, Paul? Very slow, I'd say. I, I think it was because the books we're going to aim and everything we're going to talk about are so great that the news decided to take a day off and really allow us to enjoy the books. Yes, and I think everybody was also busy catching up on The Boys Season 2, which did drop at the beginning of the holiday weekend, which Fantastic. is in its, of itself uh, comic book related news. But we do have two uh, quite big headlines that people would want to uh, catch up on if they missed this last week. Um, the first one being four kids walk into a bank uh, as reported by Deadline, uh, has been picked up for film by media company Picture Start. Uh, this is a comic book from 2016 written by Matthew Rosenberg and uh, with art by Tyler Boss. It was by Black Mask Studios. Uh, and this is, this is a fun little story, kind of a dark comedy about a group of children who decide to take on a bank robbery job themselves because one of their parents is a former criminal uh, and they don't want they don't want their uh, father getting back in the dangerous game. So these these 12 year olds are going to uh, pull off a giant heist before the adults can. Um, Rosenberg and Boss will be co-producing and Matt Pizzolo of Black Mask will develop, produce and co-finance the feature along with Picture Start. There's no release date, no cast tied yet, but the writer <laughs> Matthew Robinson will pen the adaptation. So that's pretty cool, especially if you uh, if you were reading that that little indie series, which was kind of Rosenberg's uh, kind of second stepping stone to his real breakout role, I think his first was We Can Never Go Home. Uh, but Four Kids Walk Into a Bank did have a lot of acclaim behind it. And now is a perfect time to catch up on it if you're looking forward to the film release. Oh, yeah. And when we have more news on that, we'll definitely let you let you all know if there, any, there end up being any more children walking into any more banks, anything. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you all know. Um, but also over the holiday weekend, Comixology very quietly made its entire catalog of Black Panther comics uh, free for readers. And uh, and of course, it's as a tribute to uh, the passing of Chadwick Boseman. Um, so at the time of recording this, so whether you were listening to this right now or on the podcast tomorrow, some, sometime in the future, um, as of Wednesday, right this second, they are still available. Um, and a lot of them are for the single issues of run. So it's not the big omnibus. It's not some of the uh, trade paperbacks. Uh, it is the single issues of those. Now, if you're looking for essential Black Panther uh, titles, uh, you should look for The Rise of the Black Panther comic by Evan Narciss, which features the modern definitive origin story for the character, as well as Kirby, uh, uh, Tanahisi Coates as well, Christopher Priest, Reginald Hudlin. Um, and again, this is most likely, from what we've already seen, a very limited run. And so, it, I mean, a limited uh, time offer. So these comics aren't going to be free. As far as we know, you know, they very well could be. Who knows? But um, a safe bet is to assume that these comics are most likely going to be limited time. So go read them. Sign into your Comixology account now while you can and enjoy all of those incredible, incredible uh, Black Panther runs. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful little tribute, um, especially because the writers and artists aren't necessarily making money off of these purchases, but hopefully it will inspire you to pick up some Black Panther stories at your local comic book store if you do read some that you do like. Um, it's it's about over 200 issues. It's almost the entire catalog of Black yeah. Panther books. So like that is a, a must uh, see and read in, in this time, especially if you want to get to know a little bit more of the character that means so much to so many people as well. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. So moving on from and and like we said, very slow news week. Those were the big hit points, that's but that's, that's OK. It. Sometimes sometimes that's that's fine. It means the system's working as it should. Uh, we do have our panel of the week discussion this week. We went for a character specific panel. Uh, Paul and I went back and forth on this, but we wanted to uh, do a, a Poison Ivy head-to-head. -head. She's personally one of my favorite DC characters and, and just an incredible 
uh, icon as well. So Paul, do you want to explain a little bit about the panel you picked? Yes. Uh, so the panel I chose was penned by uh, Michael Yannon, and it's from Batman number 41. Uh, for those people out there that go by what run that is, that's the Tom King run uh, that's pre-City of Bane and such. And uh, it, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, it's Poison Ivy sitting in a super dense, it's a forest of plants, and it, it's almost, she's constructed this throne around herself um and it's she says you know i have everything that i need basically um and and it's there's all these different types of ominous and dangerous looking plants that she has surrounding her uh and her uh her green garden throne um and i i loved it i just love the uh the density in this there's so much but yet so little uh so this was why i chose this particular panel for our panel of the week head-to-head -head competition extravaganza <laughs> <laughs> and since we're going big bombastic panels i had to do something equally as uh stunning and deadly and dangerous so i picked uh, a panel from harleen number three by stepan sajic color and line art uh this is first of all i love poison ivy when she's green there were a lot of visual similarities between our two panels um both in the fact that ivy is uh surrounded by lush plant life her hair which is a a shocking like contrast to the the green yeah. around her the red hair is just kind of wild and everywhere uh but there's a really beautiful kind of weaponized femininity and and floral uh decor to this one she is inside of arkham asylum uh and this is in the kind of big crescendo um of the harleen series as as harley and harvey dent and all these other characters are encountering each other in mm -hmm. arkham and ivy basically gets the go-ahead to break loose from arkham and she has full control over uh plants that have been let into the asylum um i just really love this kind of that like that feral sense of mother nature uh that yeah. is going on in this one so we put the vote up to you guys over a long and arduous holiday weekend we thank everybody who did uh chime in with their opinions we got some great feedback about why certain people preferred one panel over the other but it is time to announce the winner winner of this panel of the week is drum roll please reluctant drum roll <laughs> <laughs> oh, why are you reluctant, Paul? It's because the panel from Harleen took the top amount of votes. So that is my first marked win on panel of the week. Thank oh. you. I love the confetti. Now uh, I've got to clean up all the confetti. Yeah, that's that's Wonderful. your job. We I recycled the confetti from the last two times you won. Uh, and and uh, we used that in the air cannons there. Uh, but that was a really exciting matchup. It felt good to have one win under my belt. But Paul is still leading two to one uh, in panel picks of the week. So we will uh, put our heads together and decide what, uh, what we're choosing for our next panel of the week mashup. Mm -hmm. And you guys will be able to vote in the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group. Yeah, I mean, also, uh, we are getting a ton of really, really great feedback from you guys um, about the show, about all of our different uh, segments, honestly. So thank you so much for that. If you guys have any ideas what type of panel of the week, if you guys have themes you want to just throw out at us, you know, let us know. Maybe we'll choose it. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got a lot already on the dock that we might want to do, but who knows? M maybe uh, maybe the boss. Where's Amy? Amy's right there. <laughs> Amy's the boss. Maybe she'll let us take a detour. It'd, it'd be nice to get some uh, outsider perspective. So we're not choosing the ones. Because when you said Poison Ivy, I was like, okay, Ooh. it's just one of my favorites. Like, let's see how this goes. Uh, but it'd be nice to get an outside perspective on uh, if, if there's a certain kind of panel that you want to see us scour our comic book knowledge for and then present to you uh, for the voting. Please let yeah. us know. And this is always really fun, uh, everyone, because as soon as we come up with the theme, we're like, great. Oh, now we have to just look back at however many years of comics we've been reading and pick one panel <laughs> so it's it's more difficult than it sounds 100 <laughs> percent, yeah all right so i think it's time for us to move on to the weekly haul which is the largest segment of our show oh, uh yes. we've got some great stuff lined up for you guys today we also have a new segment uh that will be popping up later inside of this but without further ado let's kind of get to the meat of the books that we chose to read this week paul you yeah. want to start us off I sure do. Uh, so this week we really uh, we narrowed it down to two books each that we are going uh, to aim. Uh, now aim is our patented exclusive. Don't steal it. We'll sue you system. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can even do that. Uh, but the A stands for accessibility. How easy is it to pick up and read? This is the book that we're talking about. Now the I stands for interest. Uh, 
the I being, would you like this book? What is the general interest um, around this book in the comic book industry? And of course, the M stands for uh, you know, the money or the, what's the monetary investment uh, that you are going to put into this book? Uh, you know, how much does it cost? So uh, for the first book, I chose Fantastic Four Empire Fallout. Um, now I am, I was really excited for this book because I absolutely loved Empire. Uh, we had talked about earlier on in the um, way, you know, way earlier on, I think one of our first shows back that I was going to just, I was going to go right into Empire. I didn't miss one tie in. I didn't miss an issue, anything. So it really felt good to get uh, this particular book uh, as a sort of epilogue to the, to the, really crazy train of a story that was empire and just sort of uh unraveled every week with new tie-ins and everything um and for me it was between this book fallout and uh avengers aftermath i chose this because this was solicited as having some of the most repercussions that we can find kind of going forward in the marvel universe uh in terms of comics so uh, now, to get into the aim of this book, as far as accessibility, uh, with this being an Empire book and really being the end of a huge, huge event that Marvel put all this time into, you should be able to find this readily at your local comic shop. Uh, so when we also say accessibility, we mean like how easy is it going to be for you to find this book? Um, and so you're not going to struggle to find this book. There is a <laughs> ton of variants. Uh, they're everywhere. It's great. Um, now. As far as how easy is it to just pick up this book and read, I wouldn't say this book is easily accessible, especially if you have not read any of the uh, any of the Empire story before this. Now, I believe that you could just read uh, Empire one through six and be totally fine if you wanted to. You could read um, Fantastic Four. I believe it's nineteen twenty and twenty one if you really wanted to get into this book, but. Um, if you were just going to pick this up and you were going to, uh, you know, walk the wall and just pick this right up, I think it would be a little difficult to really understand Fantastic Four Empire Fallout. So I would recommend getting some of that background reading done. Um, now, as far as interest, um, I had said earlier this book was solicited as it's going to change the future of uh, what the space age of Marvel uh, looks like. And I actually believe that that's true. Uh, you know, I, after reading it, there is, there are some cliffhangers, which I think are really, really great. Um, and I think could possibly change the, uh, the future of it. I'm not going to spoil any of the empire stuff because it's really only six issues. I think you can go find it right now or pick it up in trade, whatever you're going to do, but I won't spoil it. Um, this book is a, is like a really sad looming epilogue it it's really sort of like okay this is this is great like everyone's i guess i'm spoiling a little bit here everyone's kind of happy but there is this looming presence right over the top of everyone quite literally but which you will see and um it sort of makes you feel like a hero's work is never done. Like they get to enjoy this one tiny moment of happiness. And then as soon as the you turn the page, you're done with it and you put it back in the bag and board, you're like, things are not going to always, you know, things are not always well in Waffleville as, <laughs> as we've heard. But, um, but I yeah, honestly have to celebrate a, a freaking wedding. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why I, I chose this because I felt like there was more um, spinning out of it directly than the Avengers aftermath story. The Avengers aftermath story sort of takes place and focuses on a wedding. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, so I think it was very focused, but I also haven't read it yet. So I could be completely wrong. Um, and then as far as the monetary value of this, it's $3.99. It's actually 28 pages, so it's a couple pages shorter than a normal book. Uh, and it's a one-shot, so it's not an ongoing. So that is the aim for Fantastic Four Empire Fallout. All right. Well, keeping it in the stars, uh, I'm hopping over to nice. a, a slightly <laughs> lesser known uh, independent studio that is quickly making a name for itself in on the comic book shelf. Um, I'm reviewing Stargazer number one by Mad Cave Studios. This was written by Anthony Cleveland with art by Antonio Fuso and coloring by Stefano Simeone. Uh, now, this book was supposed to release last Tuesday, but it was delayed. So today is the release, but you may see some... Um, 
online lists or literature that have the date incorrect, but Stargazer number one is out this week. Um, in terms of accessibility, this is a true number one. It's the first of a six-part miniseries, which it says inside the cover, one of six. Uh, and this is the first installment. So it gives you everything you need to dive in. It is a sci-fi mystery story. Um, it is available on Comixology. And as Paul mentioned, um, how easily available is it at your local comic book store? Um, our store had plenty of copies available. Mm -hmm. However, Mad Cave Studios is a very small publisher. Uh, they've been doing some great stuff. They also had a, a launch called Dry Foot today, and they've been doing uh, a number of other series that you should look out for. But uh, for stores that don't get a lot of um, interest in the independent comics, they may not have purchased as many issues of uh, Stargazer number one. That is why I always recommend, especially for smaller publishers, you always let your store know ahead of time if you are interested in getting that book pulled for you. Uh, we'll have a teachable moment about that later. Um, <laughs> However, uh, Mad Cave is definitely one to look out for. They recently held a uh, talent search competition, which got a lot of traction on Twitter. Um, they are known for other series like Over the Ropes and Show's End, which I actually quite enjoy. It was written by Anthony Cleveland. Um, and they specialize in the fantasy, horror, uh, and sci-fi genre stories. So you're not going to find as many slice of life uh, or super big superhero comics from Mad right. Cave. But you're going to get a lot of specialized genre stories. So that being said, who would like this book? Um, firstly, I was I was struck by the similarity to um, both Stranger Things and Die. Die from Image Comics being the Kieran Gillen and Stephanie Hahn's um, Dungeons and Dragons story. This this might be a book for you if you are interested in those titles. This is about a girl named Shay and her younger brother Kenny, as well as two of their friends who experience a traumatic event as children that they kind of really don't know what happened to them. However. Kenny is scarred by the incident, and he is convinced that they were abducted by aliens. Everybody else around them believes that that is absolutely not true. And then the story jumps forward to their adulthood, and the friends have drifted apart. Kenny is still irreparably fixated on the idea that they were abducted by aliens, while everybody else thinks that's patently untrue. Um, so it is an essential sci-fi story, very good mystery going on, and so it does have those elements of the as Kieran Gillen calls die, the goth Jumanji, where, where something <laughs> happens to the children, something came to life, but they don't want to talk about it or they, they don't believe that's what really happened. Um, again, the book ends on a kind of requisite cliffhanger, but it was not the cliffhanger I was expecting for the way that this story went. Uh, it was very polished in terms of a debut issue, uh, really oh. hits the ground running. I really liked it. Uh, it had really good pacing and Fuso's artwork actually reminds me, this is kind of weird, reminds me of the best panels from books like Alias and Stumptown and even Decorum, mm. kind of the, um, the line art isn't always closed. It's very inky and dark and has a lot of, uh, shadows on it. Oh, the I see. coloring in this book is fantastic as well between the kind of mundane situations and then those panels that are tinged with the memory of whatever happened to these children being those very purple and and maroon kind of space nebula hues um this is a 399 book for the m on aim it is an entry price for an entry issue and it is a six issue limited series so you know that you will be paying 399 for all six issues so you can kind of calculate your uh rough investment cost if you are interested in getting this book if you are interested in stargazer again i implore you to let your store know as soon as possible so that they can put in the pre-orders and that mad cave will know to print enough uh copies for all the stores that are interested i think this is a really strong debut uh worth worth the wait and the slight delay i really like uh anthony cleveland as a writer he's, he's kind of sneaking up on my radar here now with these books from mad cave and and i think that mad cave studio from what few series i've read from them are uh really worth keeping an eye on nice yeah and then that's just a standard is 3.99 yeah 3.99 nice yeah i mean that it looks beautiful that's another book that me and amy both picked up um but I mean, I feel like I've read it. You explained it so well. So, <laughs> well, I hope I didn't explain everything to you because it's it's well worth the read. Yeah, it, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm really, really excited to get into that. But now I will be getting into the next book that I aimed, uh, which is Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Trinity Crisis. I went like big events this week, <laughs> like huge. How many words are in that title? <laughs> like yeah. 12? 
13. It was named this title. We joked last week is named by fallout boy. This is just so long. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a, this is a great, 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 uh, entry into the, um, current, uh, dark Knights death metal event that's going on. Uh, this is actually written by Scott Snyder art by Francis Manipal colors by Ian Herring and letters are by Tom uh, Napolitano. Now this is a, um, a really, really big, I, I would say issue for the death metal uh, event. And I really wanted to showcase this particular one because this felt completely necessary for the dark Knights death metal story that is being told right now in Scott Snyder. Like this could have easily been dark Knights death metal. Number four, I felt um, because there's so much that happens in here. This is definitely not a one shot that you want to miss. Uh, if you are really, really reading everything and you are following along and you've been invested in the metal verse, if you will. Um, now, as far as the aim of this book, the accessibility, um, again, anything right now that is Dark Knight's Death Metal, you can find at your local shop. Um, I, I like to kind of gauge that, like, do you need to put in a pre-order for this? Um, I... That's a really difficult question because you should always pre-order your books so everyone knows how much to order for everyone. But uh, there are plenty of copies. There were plenty of copies uh, in our shop when we went. Um, but also, there have been Dark Knight's Death Metal one-shots that sold out and are already in third printing because um, Scott Snyder and and team are really throwing a lot of stuff at the wall to see what sticks and a lot of it has stuck pretty well so far it's been pretty fantastic a lot of new characters being introduced uh so it's been great um now i would i wouldn't say this is a book that you could just pick up again right off the um right off the rack and just completely understand um even if honestly you are reading all of Dark Knight's death metal, and you've been reading all of Scott Snyder's death metal stuff since 2016. Uh, this particular book is dependent on that you understand some of the uh, crises that are happening. That I'm sorry, that have happened in the DC in DC lore. Um, Final Crisis, Infinite Crisis, all of the crises. Um, like uh yes, this book there really quite a few. there are there have been more than one <laughs> i'll tell you that um this book does really sort of uh hope that you have a passing knowledge of that so i wouldn't say this book even if you're reading everything is the most accessible but i don't ever look at that as like oh geez that's really hard to read kind of look at it as like homework or as research uh when you're reading a book and you don't understand you know there's all I'm just really starting to get into Marvel. And when I read Marvel and I don't understand the character, I, I go and I research and it kind of adds to the experience. Uh, this book will make you do the same thing if you don't have a passing familiarity with a lot of the big DC events in the last 30 years. <laughs> so it's uh, it, it's it is a fun book. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Francis Manipal is one of my favorite artists, especially since the new 52 flash. Absolutely love him. Now, again, anyone who is a hardcore DC fan, uh, you are going to love, absolutely love this book. Uh, there are so many little nods and everything. I was just constantly smiling throughout the entire book, uh, which is a good sign, I'd say. Uh, um, this, I mean, this really does, though, if, if you wanted to compare it to something that you can read, I can only compare it to a DC story. And that's like this, the grandness of Crisis on Infinite Earths, like that particular story. There's so much happening. Uh, there's so many multiversal uh, elements in it that are are fun and confusing uh in 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 a way that scott snyder is, is intending on uh so it's, it's a lot of fun and it's 5.99 which is i believe two dollars over the average uh dc book but it is almost 50 pages it's uh 48 pages of almost pure content uh there's i counted there was only three pages of those that are actually um you know, not, you know, content for this. So you really do get your money's worth. So it's $5.99 for 48 pages. And this is a one shot, but it really is, uh, I'd say crucial to one to kind of keep the Dark Knight's death metal train going. Yeah. Oh, and that, that, I mean, that cover is going to tell you everything you need to know about this. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Go pick that up. 
For those of you who are listening along on the podcast, you can go to the Sideshow blog at geeksideshow.com to check out the uh, the covers, any of the panel of the week uh, images that we reference on this show. Those will all be available for you on our blog uh, when you can check out the audio as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my final book uh, comes with a caveat uh, that um, I'm going to I'm going to be aiming the Magnificent Miss Marvel number fourteen uh, from Marvel Comics. However, this was not the book that I had planned to talk about today. Um, I had originally why not, wanted- Amy? <laughs> Oh, gee, Paul, I don't know. Um, I'd originally really wanted to talk to you guys about the Vampire the Masquerade book from Vault Comics. Uh, Today, issue number two came out, and this is based on the same tabletop uh, RPG, uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Because I had a bit of an RPG theme going today, and you guys will see why in a bit. But um, I forgot to add it to my pull list. Um, we have a system, we have a, a, an app called Comic Hub that we can use and you can order books one at a time or you can commit to the whole series. You can, you can say, I, or you can say, I want issues one through four. I want issues X through X, or you can just say, give me every single issue that comes out. Mm-hmm. I thought I had said, give me every single issue that comes out, but it turns out I had been doing them one at a time and I forgot this week and they sold out. <laughs> even, the, okay. even the greatest hitters strike out sometimes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes we make goofs. Uh, but my store has ordered a uh, copy for me. It'll come in a, in a week or two. And maybe when it comes through, I will be able to talk to you guys about it. But I recommend you check that out. That's not what I'm going to be talking about now. Um, I want to talk about Magnificent Miss Marvel, uh, written by Saladin Ahmed, artist uh, Minkyu Jung, and colorist Ian Herring. So uh, Ian, hmm. Her- Ian Herring's popping up a few times this week. This oh, yeah. is the first issue of the Magnificent Miss Marvel that has published since all books went on hold in March, there has not been a Miss Marvel issue since February. Um, so a lot of a lot of the Marvel series that we know and love are back up and running already, like Thor and all the Venom and, and Spider-Man stuff. Those are back up and going. But Miss Marvel took a little bit of a pause and we are jumping right back. Um, this is an interesting thing as well, because the issue uh, ties into the Outlawed event, which has also been in stasis. Uh, mm. Marvel was kind of waiting for the right time to get the publishing uh, ducks back in a row so that they could launch the Outlawed event while Empire was happening because Outlawed was actually supposed to be over by the time Empire launched. Um, so there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a kind of chafing situation there going on with the publishing launch. Um, for those of you who were not familiar or didn't pick up Outlawed number one, uh, Outlawed number or Outlawed uh, is an event in which all the teenage superheroes are uh, put under extreme scrutiny, and there is a new organization called Cradle. Uh, <laughs> I forget the acronym, but it's very funny. Uh, that are responsible for detaining the the minors who have superpowers and choose to use them lawlessly. And this affects heroes like Miss Marvel and Miles Morales and Squirrel Girl and the entirety of the Champions team. Uh, so that one shot did come out earlier this year. Long, long time gone, but your storm may still have a copy. Um, and then this this issue picks up right after that one shot. So accessibility, um, if you're reading the Miss Marvel series all the way through, um, be sure to make sure this is back on your list. It has been quite a long pause, um, but I do recommend you still pick up that story. However, um, you kind of need to know what Outlawed is about the issue does a good job of giving you flashbacks of what happened. Um, But there's otherwise there's little point to reading this issue. If you're not already either invested in the series or the, the event itself Um, in terms of interest, again, uh, if you were, Oh, there we go. Paul (laughs) got it. Uh, Cradle stands for child hero reconnaissance and disruption law enforcement. Uh, And I love how right off the tongue. I love how, um, how, how diminutive and and <laughs> condescending that is yeah. uh, to our teenage <laughs> heroes. So uh, again, in it, the interest and accessibility kind of roll hand in hand. If if uh, you were already reading this book, you're going to want to read this one. It was a very nice introspective issue because also uh, as and I'll, I'll spoil a little bit in the wake of Outlawed, um, the champions are unable to prevent a massive uh, destructive event. And Kamala Khan actually gets put into a coma um, and she wasn't able to change like she was at a school event and you know we've got the classic uh superhero double identity uh thing going on so she's not able to join the fray as miss marvel because she's kamala khan but she does uh put herself in harm's way to help another student all while trying to um maintain the dual identity and she doesn't reveal that she's miss marvel but she gets put into a coma and she gets used as the martyr of the the organization uh, that cradle is trying to kind of make her a symbol look what happens when teen heroes get reckless they Mm -hmm. injure 
poor children like our sweet Kamala Khan. And so they create Kamala's Law. Um, and that's what we see on the cover, which is a nice kind of uh, poster advertising, protect our children, protect our future. Does your senator support Kamala's Law? Um, this is an interesting issue where we see her comatose throughout the entire story as well. Um, so it's not a typical action-packed issue, but it is a really nice introspection that does a good job of getting you back up to speed with where Miss Marvel is in her life and, and the relationship she has with different people who come to see her in the hospital. Um, price, it is a $3.99 issue, and it does advertise that there's a free digital bonus edition. However, a lot of these Marvel comics, the um, advertising didn't change between when they were supposed to be published and now. So you'll see old advertisements for conventions that are very, very canceled, um, as well <laughs> as things that have already been announced, uh, like teasing coming soon in April. However, I do believe these digital issues are still redeemable, despite the fact that Marvel closed their digital comics store. Hmm, you still can go to Marvel, uh, marvel.com slash redeem to add the digital comics to your library, which can be synced up with Comixology. The code is not supposed to expire until 2021 anyways. So I advise you to check all your Marvel issues because uh, with that $3.99 price, you do mostly get, uh, you do mostly get a, a free bonus copy with almost every Marvel comic. And that is really worth the price because um, it's a nice way to upload your comics digitally and have a mobile resource if you want to access the Comixology app or your Marvel app on the go. Mm -hmm. um, Cassidy, I see a question coming through. Do you want to shout that out? Yeah. Um, on Twitter, uh, RealTarks9 just asked, is that a stargazer background behind you, Amy? Yes, that is. I will uh, I will lean to the side here. You guys can see it. That is a crop of the first cover. Um, you get those beautiful colors uh, in there that I mentioned earlier. And that is uh, the first cover for Stargazer. Uh, that will also be on our blog for those of you who are uh, oh, following thanks. along. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> on the audio yes and then thank you chris for flashing the cover up again uh so you guys can see it is the the large portion of the cover there um, i like to try to change my background thematically to to kind yeah. of match and give you a sense of the the artwork that we're talking about also to hide the uh the cleaning i haven't done behind me on the camera but uh like i said <laughs> uh 3.99 for miss marvel um and and that digital issue price i think is always a nice balance we always try to explain to you the price of an issue and and if it costs more or less what may affect that. Mm -hmm. um, so Marvel books, $3.99, but you get a, a free digital bonus. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a great story. I completely forgot about the Outlawed event. I read Outlawed number one, and I loved it. And I thought it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, everything stopped. And so I is this the first story to i mean i, I put amy on the spot here everyone this was not rehearsed uh <laughs> none of this is rehearsed um is, i wonder if this is the first because i know it should there should be a, a miles story yeah right and then uh, and oh champions it should be coming out soon too yeah because um the the issue ends with uh see more outlawed in miss marvel 15 and the champions mm. number one so champions number one hasn't launched yet i don't believe um but i i think this is the first because you just had the fallout and aftermath issues of um empire i think they were waiting for the end of empire so it's not too kind of confused branding this is a very mm. earth-centric event with the teenage superheroes much smaller um kind of in the in the same vein as i want to say like the um avengers pleasant hill that came out a couple of years ago where it's just a really singular focused on one team it doesn't break the cosmos or anything but this is the teenage superheroes and and <laughs> there's a lot of those running around in marvel nowadays yeah. so uh we want to check in with them so i i think you can expect more from outlawed to be picking up steam again so do check out that one shot issue if you're interested at all in jumping into the event uh because i think that it, it is a lot of fun it's nice to have an event that's not going to devastate uh the entire landscape of the marvel universe but it'll have some uh consequences for the characters that we know and love which is it which isn't that why we're reading for yes. the for the fallout for the fallout <laughs> so we do have a new segment to introduce yes, we to our weekly haul uh we want to introduce the collector's corner uh because there are a couple of books this week tied to some really cool collectibles that if you just wanted to get some more of the story off the page and into your collection uh then by golly, there's a resource for that. <laughs> oh, Amy, careful. We only get one by golly a show. So <laughs> if you're choosing to use it on Collector's Corner, then all right. Everyone I take think note out there. For the debut of a new segment, I think that's worth it. Yeah, it was going to be used on Vampire the Masquerade. So you, 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 know, you had it to bank. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Collector's Corner, we were really, really excited uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, we are 
also collectors of not only comic books but all things um that we can collect and um am i up first here amy am i if you want to be i I didn't want to assume (laughs) (laughs) you're like i mean you're like i'm gonna go i'm gonna just yeah you're like i'm I'm checked out now yeah you're just thinking about vampire the masquerade um (laughs) so (laughs) thanks i uh i did a small win today i didn't have uh, i i lost panel of the week so okay Okay. Uh, um so i am going to be uh talking about the ultraman ultraverse uh which is not something that i was incredibly incredibly familiar with i i knew it in passing because it's something that sort of lives in pop culture along the lines of like godzilla for me Uh, and there are a lot of ties to from ultraman to godzilla and vice versa um but ultraman wasn't something that i'd spent a incredible amount of time on um until now and this particular uh at you know uh, photo we're seeing here is the cover for marvel marvel's new the Rise of Ultraman series. This is the number one of five. Um, and this is written by Kyle Higgins and Matt Groom. Uh, the artist is Michael Cho and Guruhiru. The colors are Espen uh, Grutirn. Uh, I, I I really hope I didn't offend anyone out there uh, by pronouncing all of those wrong. But uh, some of those names really did uh, trip me up this week. But um, I really, really loved this particular book. And I was trying when I was, we were going over Collector's Corner. Um, instinctively the first thing i wanted to really tie it to is the three zero six scale um ultraman series that we have in there thank you chris um i mean this is an incredible incredible piece now the reason that these do correlate is because right now there seems to be a huge resurgence and a boom and a love for ultraman and the ultraverse not that it didn't exist but there really seems to be a huge push now for it this particular suit is from the netflix anime uh ultraman now the what's really interesting is i i watched some of the anime and it was super interesting just to be dropped into a world that really really not only completely celebrates its lore but continues to just build upon it i mean we have a new comic that is being written by marvel and some serious heavy hitters in the art in in, as far as writing and artists go so i i love that ultraman and the ultraverse continues to sort of build upon this lore i mean they've been around uh i believe since 1961 now this comic uh and the uh netflix show they sort of play um they really, really sort of play off the Ultraman 1966 uh, serial, and I believe it was a very, very short compiled manga that we got uh, back in 1966. So it's really interesting to see that they <laughs> they kind of skipped over a couple decades of Ultraman, and I think it really is to sort of just keep things compiled uh and really sort of streamline the continuity which we understand if you read comics you understand people streamlining continuity and saying like this was all great but we really want to focus and sort of hit the ground running at this point um and that is that is what the netflix series did which is what the three zero um six scale that looks incredible um that's sort of what it did on the anime side and then the ultraman uh, the rise of ultraman the comic by marvel that is doing it in in you know comic book form now these are also not really continuous they don't take place in the same verse as a matter of fact i believe they are very strictly and definitively not uh you know they there is no crossover which is fine because i mean if you're a fan it's all ultraman and and Mm -hmm. and you love it um so i mean the rise of ultraman but it's a new marvel comic it's uh one of five it honestly is so much fun uh we're not really going to get into aiming any of these books um but if you i recommend if you like pacific rim or you are a green lantern fan which i am uh, you are gonna love this book. the The main character in this reminds me of Hal Jordan, uh, and so I, I immediately was drawn to it. It's it's uh it's only a five issues, and the anime currently is streaming right now. And I believe Cassidy has the link for the three zero six scale um, Ultraman as well. So Cassidy will go ahead and drop that everywhere if you guys even just want to take a look at it. But it's it's only one twenty nine. It's an incredible incredible piece that I think complements these really well and also will sort of play into our holler at the hall question a little later (laughs) it's almost like we layer these things into the show (laughs) 
Um, so for my collector's corner segment, I, again, I mentioned, I wanted to go with the tabletop RPG, uh, theme here from tabletop to video game. Uh, I took a look at cyberpunk 2099 trauma team. Number one, this week from dark horse comics written by Cullen Bunn with art by Miguel Valderrama and colors by Jason Wordy. Uh, this is a three ninety nine dollars first issue in a four issue limited series. Uh, and it is one of the first kind of new pieces of cyberpunk content that fans can get uh, before the hotly anticipated game release. And I know that the, the buzz for cyberpunk is ever increasing. Um, I do love the fact that the original tabletop RPG uh, takes place in 2020. Uh, and so now we're jumping 57 years into the future into what uh, we might look like at a different point. Um, the world is vibrant and detailed. Uh, very complex and fans of Altered Carbon and Blade Runner will get uh, a lot of stuff out of this if you're not already sold on the concept of the game. Um, I actually really liked there's a psychological evaluation of the main character in the comic that is um, very much like the Voight Kampf test from Blade Runner. Uh, so you get to see the themes of cyberpunk uh, throughout and uh, it's it's as much a psychological test as it is a physical test in this new world of of cyber augmentations with the trauma team which is like a mobile medic team in this world that is so torn apart by gangs and you're following the sole survivor of a of a trauma team that uh itself was torn apart on a rescue mission um huge buzz for this comic already and if you're looking to get into more because a lot of a lot of reviewers were citing like this is the first look we get uh of of new stuff before the game um so for those of you who are looking to dive into Night City, Dark Horse has also published a, a hardcover deluxe art book that is available through Sideshow um, called The World of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, this is a 192 hardcover page book, uh, hardcover, 192 page Oh my goodness, I said that out of order. 192 page <laughs> hardcover book um, that comes with a lot of uh, fun additional pieces if you really like kind of truly diving into the world with different pieces of uh, memorabilia and flair. Um, it goes into the environment and the world of cyberpunk. You can see um, in the gallery image provided, and we will share on the blog, there is an exclusive cover to the hardcover book that has the map of Night City, and you can see all of the kind of streets and, and uh, pathways through the city. It comes with uh, four postcards that depict different vehicles from different parts of the city a johnny silverhand memorial poster hmm. a uh, slip case that is really cool because it comes apart in like uh very different shapes that you would it's not just a a slip cover but it has like different uh hard edges and shapes like you'd expect in a cyberpunk world oh yeah that's awesome yeah, and then there's a couple of sets of temporary tattoos, so you can align yourself with one of the numerous gangs. <laughs> now, uh, the the comic book this week isn't necessarily about the gangs, but it is about the people and the medics who have to deal with the warfare of the gangs. Um, but all of this is just building that anticipation for this game that I, I believe, based on the number of um, the the timing delays and and release changes it has had, I think they're really pushing to make a fabulous fabulous product um but dark horse is the the company to look for to uh to check out all of that cd project red publishing um and cassidy does have the link to that book that is available on sideshow it is 99.99 uh you can spend your reward points on that if you do have that and then otherwise <laughs> you can pick up the the trauma team number one uh from dark horse comics today or local store and again it is a four issue miniseries definitely a must read if you are getting hyped for the game and it is a quick, just a quick dip into the world of Night City uh, with that. And I, I found it to be a very solid issue. Um, I'm a sucker for all things cyberpunk. And it does actually <laughs> nicely bridge the gap between what I would believe would be the original tabletop RPG and how it translates into the video game world. Um, it also doesn't inundate you with with like hard sci-fi tech lingo that just makes it oh, unable good. to be read. Yeah. Yeah. Which... Uh, a lot of books can fall into that pitfall, especially when you're coming from a gaming world that has mm -hmm. such a specific uh, lexicon to it. So yeah, I highly I recommend that. checking that out. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I mean, it's so cool to see tabletop RPGs like this and Vampire the Masquerade and even Dungeons and Dragons getting their own mm -hmm. comic book adaptations uh, because it's just another storytelling uh, format that you can dive into. So yeah, that and, and, and it's great. We, you know, when we were thinking of this particular segment we loved it because well of course this show is all about comic books we uh we understand you know we have you know 
sideshow also you know makes and has and statues and stuff because we understand that like if you love something that much like a green lantern or something you really really want to uh bring it from the page to your home just sort of really really show your appreciation for it um because comic books live in one medium and to be able to you know bring it to something else like the uh you know uh like cyberpunk or like the six scale ultraman uh you know we're very fortunate that we can do that just easily you know go onto a site and it's it's fantastic and i love it i love that poster that silver hand poster yeah it's and it's it's nice because uh, these comic books do ex the, the stories that are told in these comic books exist in uh many realms and and yeah and bringing those into your home is a an important part of uh the the multimedia experience of of reading a comic i believe um we've got a, a note from our moderator cast here Cassidy here that Sith Lordly on YouTube has been reading the Dungeons and Dragons comics, which is excellent. Nice. Um, I know that there are multiple ones, and I know they've even crossed over with Rick and Morty. Uh, <laughs> of course, which they and they made like an official module for that. So sometimes that's even that's an animated series going to a comic of a tabletop RPG that then becomes an official module for the game. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's really fun. I know there's a lot of D and D series, so uh, want to hear about what which ones you are checking out. Um, but we are moving on. Uh, that That is our weekly haul. I mean, there are more books we read this week, but we're not going to get into them. Do check with your local comic book store, and there's some great resources online. You can always go to previews to see uh, what is out this week, or if you've got the Comic Hub app or your store does a newsletter. But now we do want to get into that question because we asked you a great question last week that ties into some of Paul's books today. And then we got a new question for you uh, that we've devised based on some of the things we've talked about today. <laughs> So last week we asked, when you read big two event books or, or event books from any comic book series, uh, do you stick with the core story or do you explore the tie-ins? What influences this decision? So Paul, who who among uh, our listeners hollered at the hall this week? <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, we had so many great responses in the Let Your Geeks Head Show Facebook group. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for uh, responding there. Uh, we had a ton of them. We really, because uh, we had to narrow it down, we, we've got three here. So the first is, I think, one that me and Amy re can really relate to, uh, is uh, Andrew Worshborn. He said, I'm a sucker, and I read all the tie-ins. With 2015 Secret Wars, I read all the books and found a few I really liked that I wouldn't have touched otherwise. Um, now it's it's no it's no uh, you know Amy loves Secret Wars. I think it's safe to say this is your favorite event, right? And yeah, you know what I I think War of the Realms just because of the the nostalgia factor and how oh, much sure. Jason Aaron yeah. built, built up to it. But I think in terms of execution and surprising me with what I thought was going to work and what didn't, Secret Wars is like it changed my entire understanding of reading Marvel comics. And there's yeah. still stuff that comes up that's like, that's from Secret Wars. That's from Secret Wars. Like <laughs> that was a definitive event that that stuck the landing. Yeah. And I have a a a short box that is almost full. Uh Andrew, we'll talk after this because I'm almost there. I've almost got all the tie-ins and all of the issues in the core story, some variants and and stuff. It's it's a lot of books. It it literally almost fills up a short box. That's There's insane, so though, much. because Marvel canceled – for those of you who didn't read Secret Wars, because, like, a lot of these other events – like, I read every single issue and tie-in for War of the Realms, and mm -hmm. it gave me event fatigue, and I don't think I will ever be able to do that for another <laughs> event again, but it was worth it. Um, Secret Wars, Marvel canceled their entire publishing line and was like, only what we are publishing for Secret Wars is what exists at Marvel <laughs> Comics right now. And every issue, every story became a five-issue miniseries – yeah. And then there was the nine issue Mac, <laughs> like mega series that actually my my favorite thing is that it's it's one of eight, two of eight, three of eight. You get to number seven and then it's seven of nine, eight of nine, <laughs> nine of nine, because they realized they didn't have enough issues to tell the full story. Yep. I, I could never have done that. They canceled the entire publishing run. And that was all that Marvel had at the time. I mean, so that's maybe why people read all those issues. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so much. And um, we actually have, Amy, if you want to read the next one, this is an interesting take on Secret Wars, I'd say. Yes. Uh, Kelsey Lynn Clary in the Facebook group said, it depends on how interested I am in the event, but I usually start off trying to read at least everything. Sometimes I read everything the whole way through. Sometimes I drop things over the course of the event. I often find that I tend to like the tie-ins more over than the main event, though. Uh, with the most recent Secret Wars, I dropped the core series and what? I read most of the tie-ins. <laughs> that is like... 
That's bold. Yeah, her and Andrew are the yin and yang of this holler at the hall question. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, that is very bold. I mean, that is I, – I don't know if I could do that. So, uh, Kelsey, I, I have – so much respect for you because my my brain my collector mentality would say like i need to at least get one through eight and then seven through nine and <laughs> how secret wars did but yeah that's that's interesting i don't know if i've heard that take before but you know i'm also a firm believer in if you're not enjoying a book it's not if it's not serving you anymore mm -hmm. drop off when you can make sure if you're gonna do it and you like if you didn't already pay for all the books ahead of time, like fulfill your obligation to the store as best you can or give them as much notice so they don't get stuck with the last two issues of a series that it's really hard to to sell. Um, but, you know, if it's not if it's not doing it for you, there's no you, no one's going to come to your house and make you read the book if you don't want to. Yeah. And um, and we are running a little bit low on time. So I think we're just going to uh, jump right to the next holler at the hall question. Uh, yes. this, this is a good one. Um, so do you display your comic books alongside collectibles? If so, let's see them. You guys can send us pictures. Um, you can really find us anywhere at the comics hall. Uh, that's Twitter, Facebook. Um, you can reach out to me and Amy in the group. You can find us on, did I say Twitter, Facebook? <laughs> and um Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, there we go. And Instagram, you can send us pictures there. You can DM. Or uh, if you'd like, you can send them over to the comics hall at sideshow.com. That's our email. You can you can reach us there. If you display your collectibles with your comics, I'm really curious. I would love to see them. Like, um, you know, maybe next we'll, we'll save some stories for next week as to like what I'm currently working on with some of my <laughs> with some of my displays. But yes. But yeah, that, that is our next question for Holler at the Hall. So uh, we will post that in the Let Your Geek Set Show Facebook group as well. But again, you can find us uh, at the Comics Hall. Um, that's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as, uh, again, me and Amy are pretty active in the Let Your Geek Set Show Facebook group. Cassidy, please drop a link there when you can. Um, and also email us at the Comics Hall at sideshow.com. Yeah, the yeah, the comics hall at sideshow.com. Sorry, yeah. there's so many ats going around. <laughs> yes. Um, sorry. And you know, if you don't want to send us a picture, but you still want to describe to us, paint us a word picture. Uh yes, please. We, we want to feature your responses. Uh so and we and we thrive on your feedback. So you guys can keep an eye out for that. You can also keep an eye out for our next uh panel of the week. Mm -hmm. Uh we will deliberate on that. I'm I'm sure Paul's gonna throw me a curveball to make up for uh this last week. Uh, <laughs> but uh I will put, and I will make sure I have all my books on my pull list for next week. Uh, so we, have, we have no more slip ups. Um, the, the panel of the week is going to be best Green Lantern panel of him during this one particular Sinestro moment. <laughs> or uh, 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 best panel from Vampire the Masquerade number two. Oh, yes. did you not read that? I'm sorry. Mm, um, sorry. But thank you guys all for, for participating. We love having uh, you guys in our chats and uh, giving your feedback on the panels and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you are listening on the podcast, again, you can go to geeksideshow.com to check out the blog for all of the images and links featured in our show. Uh, otherwise, you can join us every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific on Sideshow's official social media channels wherever we are streaming live. And you can listen to the podcast on all your favorite platforms, including Apple and Spotify. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, I'm Amy. And I'm Paul. And this has been the Comics Hall.